right. Great. Hello, everybody. Um, so it's supposed to be um, a round table after, and then they asked me to introduce the round table about um, culture in video game. In fact, I changed the title. It was culture. I don't uh, remember the real title, but I changed the title. So um, this is a quite personal talk. I'm introducing the round table here. Um, so uh, first, are all, all these stars, uh, how come I'm here? In fact, I met Thorsten, the organizer of this event in, uh, in Rome. We were on a game developer conference, the Italian video game developer conference, to be exact. And we met this Brazilian guy uh, named Moacir Alves, and they talk, we were, with Thorsten, talking about creation, video games, and they were talking about business, business, business. And at least I put my finger, I say, okay, I went to Brazil six months ago with um, Nick, the same uh, developer convention in Brazil, they invite me, and I never went to Brazil, and I was so exciting doing, going to Brazil about all the Brazilian culture and um, how, I don't know, what amazing game I will discover, discover in Brazil because of course they will do Brazilian game. So I was really excited. And I, <coughs> I met maybe more than 20 companies in Brazil and they do games like that. I mean, games about worship, about um, orcs, uh, fantasy, everything, but no one make a Brazilian game. So this is the goal of my presentation today. In fact, I have a little story to start. It was uh, in Japan, I spent holiday with my family, and um, this is my son. We enter in this big temple in Nara. He began to burn this thing. I don't know how he know. We enter in the temple, and he tell me, Dad, do I have the right to enter in the Buddha news? What is that? But what, how do you know? How? And he enters the Buddha news because there is a Buddha news on this temple. And you know, because Naruto. In a Naruto video game, Naruto enter the Buddha news in this temple in Nara. I absolutely was, I don't know uh, <laughs> nothing about that. I have another. Quick example, uh, another friend who played Elgate, Elgate London and knew perfectly all the subway station in London because he plays this game. Uh, another one who played Dynasty Warrior never went in China, but know all the legends, all about the historical figure and historical battle of China just because of the game. Um, Yes, this is my favorite example. So I also teach um, game design. And once in France, in south of France, where I come, as you see in my accent, I ask a question to my students. Uh, do you know a, a Tarask? A Tarask? Nobody. Do you know Kappa? Who know Kappa? OK. <laughs> and who know Tarask? Okay, they do the same. Everybody know uh, a Kappa now, uh, maybe for movie, cartoon movie, but also for video game, of course. But Tarask, nobody know. Other demonstration about that? The Tarask uh, was first mentioned in La Légende Dorée um, early. But the Kappa is quite new. It's quite new because in Japan there is no really history and legend, there is only story about samurai. And one year, 100 years ago, <coughs> before uh, Kunio Yanagita writes his book and went to the Tono, to, to Tono Valley to get some legend, nobody in Japan know what's a kappa. And one, uh, 100 years ago, everybody in the world know what is a kappa. <coughs> So by this, I wanted to demonstrate that um, our Japanese and American friend put many of their um, 
I'm going too fast here. Sorry. Um, many of their culture, their cultural heritage in their game, but we don't. Um, go back to value. This is the real title of this conference, in fact, of this roundtable, cultural value in video games. So um, when I teach um, game design, it's the same. I say, um, if you really want to put a meaning in your game, you have to ask you at the beginning of the process, of the design process, two questions. The first one will be, how was the value in my game, what value I want to put in my game. And worse, <laughs> the second one will be uh, what will remain of my game at the end. Um, this is two, two really difficult questions to answer, but the first one, just focus on the first one, the value, uh, is really important if you want to put a real meaning in your game. So this is a quite um, classic technique for a game designer. But this, and there is more or less a value in every game. I took some example. Uh, this is Kiriku, a game I, we made uh, years ago, <laughs> with uh, some value of courage, uh, compassion, family. Another one, more classical, Edge of Mythology, where you can find organization value collaboration, and also sacred because it's mythology. And worse, GTA, of course you have value in that. Not value like immediate value that you can see, but you can do what you want in this world of, uh, <coughs> of GTA, and at least if you are too worse, you will be punished. So in GTA, you learn the limits of the society, and it's a value. But all these values that we put on our game are completely cultural because each game designer has his own value and his value depends on its own, his own culture. You have just to compare two collaborative games do at the same period. One is Japanese, the other is American. In one, you have really to collaborate be between two characters, Mario and Luigi, they have no the same power, and you have a real notion of collaboration between, between these two characters. Uh, in the first X-Men game, all the X-Men have the same power, in fact. They can shoot, they can kill, and you just take the X-Men you like, and there is no real collaboration. But they present the game on the same way. And another example, more recent, <laughs> um, who just revitalized revitalize the genre maybe with a quite different approach and for me it's quite Euro European this one. Anyway, now we saw that all these game designers are thinking about value in their game but are they thinking about just culture like making a, a game about Le Louvre or another game about Faust for Germany? or dance for Italy. Uh, I don't know if you play that dance inferno. Uh, I, 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 I wrote the book years ago, and uh, when I played the, the game, it was just oh, amazing for me. And I have uh, an example I hate like that. It's Titan Quest. Because first, I love the game, but when I play that game, I saw so many mistakes in the antiquity. And this is my past. I learned it at school, and um, you know, it wastes my pleasure, really. <coughs> so, you know, it's not difficult to make a game talking about Greek and Italian and, and uh, antique thing and just take a, a little bit about history. It's not so difficult. <laughs> so, um, what I'm doing, uh, I try to put real monsters in my games. Um, this is a game uh, around the Mediterranean basin and you have Roman against Greek, against Persian, and every unit in the army has the real one, has, has the real name of the unit. Infantry in Roma was Astati, 
and they are called Astat in the game. But they are funny. I mean, the game's still funny uh, with cartoon characters, and, but they have the real games. Uh, another example, uh, Vampire in Paris. I try to put my own culture, my own place, the place I, I love, and on a normal game about vampires. That's it. And uh, what, if you want to know more, my, my company is named Big Media, of course. And that's it. In fact, I just wanted to push all game designer on the public here. And I think there is many to think about making games about European cultural heritage. And I think it's quite important for French and Germany because we have a real and England because we have a real video game industry so we can do it and it was maybe a little bit not so sympathetical from me to just say to my Italian <laughs> to these Italian people in Italy uh, you saw uh, the IDVG as a, my first slide say you have to do Italian games with your it Italian cultural heritage because they don't have so many studios, they don't have so many video games companies there, so it's difficult for them. But for you, German, do a game with Dante, and I will do a game with Le Louvre. So the round table now. <laughs> so, um, you can, you can have